Okay, so uh, we just did an intro, and now I'm going to get straight into reading the Word of God. So we're uh, um, January 1st, our reading for the first day is the first two chapters of Genesis. Uh, so that's Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. So you're going to need to set aside some time for reading. My suggestion would be, if you miss a day, just turn in your um, your notebook that you're keeping or in your Bible. Turn, just maybe even put a little a flag, if you've got a flag, on that day uh, of your reading plan. And if not, just turn the bottom of the page up like that, you know, like that. So no, I didn't get to read that. But get back onto the reading plan um, because um, you can come back to what you've missed at the end of the week. On the day of rest, we will rest. Um, but we, I probably will also keep going and reading the Word of God because I don't believe it's unrestful, if you will, to... Um, yeah, we're not going to stop any day from reading the Word of God, but... I guess what I'm trying to say is find the end of the week, Saturday and Sunday. Find a time in Sunday especially to get caught up. But if you get off a day, please just start with the day that we're on at that time. So today we are on day one, and we will be reading Genesis 1 and 2. Um, so we've already prayed, by the way. We're in the same seating time. And so we're going to get straight to If you haven't prayed or you didn't pray with me, stop. Just put me on hold and pray. Ask the Holy Spirit, we'll ask him again, Lord, just be with us and guide us through your word for what you want us to get and cl draw closer to you. Any convictions and corrections you need to do in our heart, we need to stop for that, Lord, and get uh, a clean slate with you and ask for forgiveness and, um, and just repent in Jesus' name and get in your word and learn about you and draw close to you and know you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. So the first account um, in Genesis 1 is the account of creation. And um, as uh, this Bible has some, some little overviews and stuff, I, I'm, I'm going to um, make comment to some of the things I thought were, were good. It talks about us being daily walkers, right? We're walking in Christ daily. And Jesus reminded us to take one day at a time that we can't handle any problems of the future. But that's not all he meant by that. He also means we, we can't handle tomorrow at all. In other words, there's nothing wrong with being planful, budgeting, um, thinking about the future, all those kind of things. I don't mean that. Um, but as far as worrying about the future, he was saying just one day at a time. But I think he also means one day at a time on everything. Don't try to get ahead of yourself here. Some of you, because I hadn't commented how we were going to do this yet, and I apologize for that, may have read a little ahead. Good for you. Get to where we're reading right now, though. Uh, you can keep reading ahead if you like to. Um, but um, let's, let's be to where we are in chapter 1 now. So we're daily walkers, and we're going to take one day at a time. And that, I believe, is, is how Jesus wants us to do things. Um, okay, so let's move straight into it. In chapter 1, uh, verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created. And as we look through this, we see that the earth was formless and had deep waters. And so I had originally thought we were a big formless water ball planet but even water ball implies that we were round i don't know if we were or not i don't necessarily think we were flat either i just think that if the bible says we were formless we were formless um but at the same time i love that in the first few verses god makes it very clear between verses one through three who he is and it lines up with john chapter one verses one through three who he is we'll look at that real quickly it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit, God, the Spirit, um, was hovering over the surface of the water. He's hovering over. There's power in the Spirit when He hovers over us. And then God said, God's Word spoke, God the Word, Jesus He's not called Jesus here. He is not given a name here yet. We get his name later. Um, when he comes onto the earth, he gets a, an official name. But here it says, And God said, Let there be light. And as you go on and you see, um, in verse 5, he makes the light and the darkness night, and that creates the first day. So the first thing he did was make, he, he's separating 
light, darkness. He makes it, and then he separates it, and he calls it a day. So God makes a day. Um, then as he keeps going, uh, verses um, 6 through 8, you see him um, separating these waters. Remember, it was a formless um, planet with darkness covering the deep, deep waters. And in, he goes on to say that um, he's going to separate those waters. This is very interesting imagery. Uh, waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. And he puts the space in between and calls it sky. And that was the second day. So he makes sky. But don't skip over what that must have looked like. Imagine when you're you're looking out um, over the ocean. Don't think of the beach yet because we haven't talked about land yet. But just imagine the ocean is this big, huge water. And then there's sky. But at this time, above the sky was the same thing that was below water. Can you imagine that? Like an ocean here, a sky, an ocean here. Isn't that interesting? Or did he put that water way out in space, making it wait to be rain? At this point, there had been no rain, so I wonder if the water was just sitting up there. Because if you remember when it flooded, it was like, whoosh. I can imagine what if the ocean above fell on the ocean below, just raining down, but not like we think of pitter-pats, more like Niagara Falls, because nothing had a chance to make it. It's just an interesting thought. Sometimes I like to stop and think about what that looked like. Okay, let's keep going. All right, in verse 9, then he goes on to talk about he lets the waters beneath uh, the sky flow into one place, and that's where he makes dry ground appear, right? And um, then he says uh, in verse 10, let the land sprout with vegetation. So there's seed-bearing plants, and there are trees uh, that grow seed-bearing fruit, um, and he made it where those seeds can make more. So he is making the seas on the third day. He is making the land on the third day. So he's dividing them. And he's making vegetation on the land. All right, so then we go on to verse 14. Let the light appear in the sky to separate day and night, and let them be signs to mark the seasons, the days, and the years. And these lights shine down on the earth. And he made the great two lights, one greater for the day, one smaller for the night. We think of that as our sun and moon. Not exactly sure how it worked, but that's probably what it was. How did, you know, astron astronomy, I can't talk, astronomy, not astrology. We don't mess with any form of witchcraft or fortune telling, but astronomy, the study of the stars. Um, it's interesting to see this play out. So uh, this is in day four, and he had made the sun and the moon, the stars, the seasons, the days, and the years. So he's making a timeline system based on how the light of the day and the light of the dark work to make a day. Isn't that interesting? It's so complicated and so simple and orderly at the same time. Okay, and then verse 20, it says, Let the waters swarm with fish and other life. Uh, let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. In verse 22, it says, And God blessed them, and he made them fruitful and multiply. So not only is he making, uh, this is the fifth day, not only is he making fish and birds, he's making them to reproduce. And he's making them not just to be, but to fill the, air, the water and to fill the air. It's just amazing. He's just filling the earth up with life, 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 life. Okay, in the verse 24, uh, that was verse 5, I mean day 5. In verse 24, let the earth produce every sort of animal, each producing offspring of the same kind, livestock, small animals, and, and animals that scurry, wild animals that scurry, I'm sorry, and scurry along the ground and wild animals. And after that happened, he made all sorts that would be able to produce offspring of the same kind. He said it was good. And then he gets to a very important part for us. In verse 20, by the way, if you see me lifting up, it's because um, I need to look at you, but I also need to look through my bifocal, and these aren't strong enough, so I lift them up a little bit. Um, then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the land, and the small animals that scurry on the ground. So, verse 27, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, both male and female. Then God blessed them and told them to be fruitful and multiply and reign. So you see here, first of all, in verse 26, that's the first time you actually see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is what we call that. That's not what's listed as the in, in the Bible, but we've used the word Trinity because it's equality of three. Um, 
but we see him say, let us make man in our image. Now, I've heard some people say, uh, oh, that just means let us gods. Um, that back in that day, there was many gods, and, and they talked about gods. Our God is very clear that you cannot worship any other, that he is the one and only God. So that is not what that means. Um, I believe, and some people have said, what means God and his angels? God's very clear in Hebrews chapter 1 that the angels are not his equal nor are the angels the equal of Jesus. He's very clear if you want to go read Hebrews chapter 1. By the way, if I ever say something like that, you may want to write down, I'm going to go do a Bible study on Hebrews chapter 1. Some people have asked me, how do you set up yourself a Bible study? Well, this is one way. But as you have little offshoots, make them into Bible studies. Uh, we're going to do that when we talk about um, Jesus being God. And and who knows all the Bible studies that will shoot off from this. So, Okay, so uh, now that is... Uh, Day six. And what did we learn through day six? We learned that um, God made animals and humans and the power for humans to reign over animals, birds, and sea, and creatures. He reminded them that plants and fruits were the food for both man and animals. So we are not eating meat at this point, okay? God made it very clear. You're a vegetarian. <laughs> You're going to eat plants, every green plant for food, and these seed-bearing plants and these trees, and they're going to bear fruit, and their fruit's going to bear fruit. They're going to have seeds out of that that'll bear fruit. It will keep going. You're to multiply, and so are they. The animals and the plants, everything's going to multiply. It's going to just be filled. The earth is going to be filled with life and self-sustaining life um, in the sense that he has, not self-sustaining, God-sustaining life where he has set up a system for us to be able to have what we need. Um, of course, the biggest thing we need is him, and we're going to see that as we move on. All right, so then we go to um, chapter 2. So um, let's start in the next video. We'll go to chapter 2, and that will be it for the day. And then we'll start with um, day 2, January 2nd, day 2. And we'll just wait for this video to play out real quick. It takes a minute, y'all. Sometimes it starts flashing, and you're never sure when it's going to